pulse is a little rapid and your blood pressure is a shade higher than normal. Have you been under any kind of pressure lately, Heather? Uh, no, nothing at all. Well, you know, you can't allow yourself to get worked up over anything right now. I know, Gina. I am trying to stay as calm as I can. I hope so. I want you to come in now twice a week, both days that I'm in the office. Well, sure, whatever you say. But there isn't anything seriously wrong with me, is there? No, no, and don't worry. In fact, don't worry about anything. Now, that's an order. I just want to have a fine, healthy boy, that's all. Heather, you're going to have a fine, healthy baby, but I can't guarantee you the sex. <sighs> Come on. <laughs> all right, I'm going to just write this appointment slip down for you as a reminder. Okay? Yes. Thank you, Gina. I shall see you then. Okay. And please be calm and relax. Just concentrate on the spring when you'll be taking care of a beautiful, healthy little baby. I will, I promise. Okay. Kay, you can send in the next patient now. Oh, hi, Gary. Hello. Oh, Kay, on second thought, hold that patient for a little while longer. I'll let you know. Someone just came in and I'm going to be tied up for a couple of minutes. Well, you might be tied up a little longer than that, and I don't know if I like being referred to as just someone. Oh? Well, how about someone very special? Yeah, that's much better. Listen, I just came in to tell you that I took your advice and I made up with Howie. I apologized and he forgave me and we're back being good little brothers again. Oh, Gary, I'm glad. Oh, that makes me so happy. I hate seeing you two at each other's throats. Well, we're not anymore, so you don't have to worry. And seeing Dory coming to Thanksgiving dinner tomorrow? Yep. Had them confirm again, and they say they're both looking forward to it. Oh, good. Great. Listen, I just ran into Alan and Monica on the way to lunch. They were beaming from ear to ear. Yeah, I know. They seem to be the happiest couple I've seen around lately. Yeah, I wondered if there was any particular reason for their happiness. Well, how do you mean? Well, I mean, I know that they've been wanting a child for quite some time, and I just wondered if maybe Monica wasn't pregnant. I mean, if she was, I'm sure she'd come to you for confirmation. How about it? Is she? You can't be serious, Gary. Are you actually asking me to violate a patient's confidence? No, I don't think so. I just wondered. Idle curiosity. I suggest you put your idle curiosity to better use. Oh, come on, honey. It's not as if I asked if she had some terminal illness or something. I mean, pregnancy is a wonderful, joyous event. I'd love her to be pregnant, that's all. Well, then I suggest you ask Monica herself. All right, I'm sorry. Forget I brought it up. Is that what you came in here for? No, no, of course not. I came to tell you something. That's just a side issue. So tell me. <sighs> yeah, um, am I keeping you from anything? Well, I've got a patient waiting, but she's early, so go ahead. Well, all right. Um, look, I don't want you to get upset about this, but I'm going to fly to New York tonight. What? I have to have a couple of days to talk to Julian Drake about my book. Are you forgetting tomorrow's Thanksgiving? No, I'm not. I'm sorry about the timing. Sorry? Well, surely now, Mr. your Mr. Drake is not going to be conducting business on Thanksgiving. Well, as a matter of fact, he is. I just talked to him, and he said this would be a very good time for us to get together. Oh, Gary, no. Now, honey, I'm sorry, but he says he can actually devote more time to me now because the publishing office is going to be closed. Gary, this is our first Thanksgiving since we've been married. Yeah, I know, but there'll be many others. Come on, it's just another day. No, it's not. Not to me. I even planned a special surprise for you. You did what? My Aunt Rose is coming down from Boston to cook dinner. Oh, yeah? When did you plan that? Three days ago, she phoned and she wanted to come down here to help make it a family, traditional kind of Thanksgiving. Oh. Uh, what, turkey and meatballs? That's not funny. Hey, honey, come on, come on, come on. Now, don't take it so hard. I wish I could be here. But now you've got to know how, how important this is to me. All right, yeah, yeah, all right, I know. But I can't deny that I'm very disappointed, Gary. Look, I'd understand if you had to go to Denver or to Dallas on your research project. In fact, I think I've been very understanding on all your trips, haven't I? Yeah, you have. All right, I won't make a fuss. Just get through it somehow, I suppose. Well, now, come on, don't make yourself too big a martyr out of this either. I mean, if he decides to publish this book, it's going to be very good for both of us, you know. 
And look, you're going to have Howard, and you have Dory, and you have Aunt Rose. I mean, it's not exactly like you're going to be alone on a day. And I'm very glad about that. But you won't be there. Honey, I'll make it up to you. If this book is a success, next year I'll get you a diamond turkey with emerald dressing. I don't want a diamond turkey. I just want you. Oh, honey, what's wrong? I just have some kind of premonition that our work is drawing us apart. Gary, I don't want that ever to happen. Yeah, don't you be silly. Look, if this book gets any success at all, all it's going to do is bring us together. Because at last, I'm going to finally have something of my own to be proud of. Something that I can be excited about. Dr. Weber. Mommy, would you take care of these for me, please? Of course. Rick, how's Leslie doing? Well, it's still a little rough on her yet. Back at the clinic. Steve told me about the uh, board's decision about the contract. I thought it was terribly unfair. Oh, thank you, Audrey. There doesn't seem to be much any of us can do about it except sit around and wait and hope they change their minds. Oh, I'm sure they will. I think I'll stop by and see her later on between classes. Leslie would appreciate that very much. I, uh, I was really upset when I heard what happened between Bobby and Laura the other day. Yes, uh, well, so was I. But hopefully the air is clear and they will avoid each other from now on. I may be a little hard around here. They run into each other so much. Well, you know, I was here when Laura came in with Scotty and Bobby went over to her and made a sincere apology. So hopefully that is a very good sign. Oh, good. I hope so. And Laura's got enough to contend with at school, let alone additional hostility here. Hmm. You know, I've been wanting to talk to Laura about uh, her version of what happened, but I think now I'm just going to forget about the whole thing. Maybe so. Oh, Rick, incidentally, hmm. Jeff told me that he and Heather are coming to your house for dinner tomorrow night. And Steve and I would love it if you'd come by for a drink in the afternoon so we could toast the holiday together. Thank you. I'll tell Leslie about it. Hi, Dan. Hi, sweetheart. I'm sorry I didn't get to see you last night or this morning. We seem to be missing each other right down the line, don't we? Yes, I know. How are you feeling today? Much better. I'm sorry that I lost control of myself yesterday. Hey, as long as you got back on top of it so quickly, that's great. Yeah, I did. Good. Dr. Taylor helped me a lot, even though I didn't have very much time with him. I was uh, very late for my appointment. Well, I'm glad you got to see him. We got to talk it out anyway. The only thing that worries me is what Mr. Higgins thought of it. And what he's going to report to Judge Stallman it scares me. Laura, can you take a break for lunch? We'll talk right now. All right. Uh, I'll drop these books off at the book room, and then I'll meet you in the cafeteria. Okay. Okay, I won't be long. All right. Oh, good. I'm glad I saw you. Do you think you could manage alone in the book room for an hour or so this afternoon? Uh, yes, of course, Heather. I'm going to have lunch with my dad, but after that I can manage. Oh, that's great, because I have to go out for a while. I'd really appreciate it. Sure, no problem. Audrey, would it be all right if I use the phone? Uh, I want to call my mother. Oh, yes, of course. Help yourself. Seven four nurse station, Miss Spencer. No, Dr. Jeff Weber's in surgery right now. Won't be through for several hours. May I take a message? Okay, operator six. Buffalo, yes, I've got it. Mr. Jameson at the motor in the motel. Weber residence. All right, I'll Hello? see if Dr. Weber gets the message. Weber residence? Is someone there? Hello? I know if you... Oh, Mom, are you still there? Heather, is that you? What took you so long to answer? I'm sorry, I was listening to something else. Listen, I have to see you this afternoon. If I can, it's really important. Oh, well, what's it about? I, I can't tell you now. I'll explain when I see you. Well, Heather, I just don't know what to say. I mean, I have got my hands full trying to organize this dinner for tomorrow, and there just is so much more to do. Now, if you want to talk to me, you're just going to have to come by the Weber's, that's all. All right, fine. I didn't say you had to come to me. I just said I had to talk to you. Well, you don't have to snap my head off. Oh, you're upset about something, aren't you? I'll tell you when I see you. I can't talk now. 
Well, when are you coming by here? As soon as I can make it. Goodbye. Excuse me, Bobby. What? Oh, was that a message for Jeff that I heard you taking just then? Yes, it's from the same Mr. Jameson that keeps calling him. Well, why don't you give it to me and I'll see that he gets it. Oh. All right. Heather, do you suppose that Mr. Jameson is coming back to Port Charles? Oh, I haven't faintest idea. Uh, would you tell Laura that I had to go to see my mom now instead of later? Oh, Heather, um, maybe you better tell her yourself. Laura and I have not been getting along too well lately, and I don't want to get blamed for causing another problem when it's not my fault. All right, she's having uh, lunch with her dad now, so I'll tell her myself, Bobby. Ellen. Monica. Hi. 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 Hi, Laura. How are you today? I'm just fine, thanks, Monica. Would you two like to join us? Yeah, we'd love to, but uh, Laura and I have a little thing we need to talk about. Well, if I don't see you before, have a nice Thanksgiving. Hey, you have the very best possible. Thank you. Bye. Well, um, Tracy seemed in extraordinarily good spirits today, don't you think? Oh, oh, uh, yeah, yeah. It's just too bad you can't go to Long Island for Thanksgiving. Listen, I'm a bit relieved. Uh, I can only take so much of a curiosity in questioning. What do you mean? What? What is she questioning now? Monica, she's always on about something. I mean, today she came right out and she asked me if you were pregnant. Why is she so intrigued by that? Oh, it's as I told you before. She has a very basic reason for that. It all goes back to my grandfather's trust fund. Tracy's had her eye on it ever since the day he died. We're going to beat a little puncher, aren't we? Why is it so important? Monica, we're talking about millions of dollars. Well, how much money can you spend in a lifetime? I don't care about the trust fund. All I care about is giving you a child that you will love and be very proud of. It's a man. <sighs> that sister of mine. You heard me tell the man in the office? Yeah. She just walked in with Gary Lansing. Did you find anything out yet? I'm afraid it struck out, Tracy. She wouldn't tell me anything. Okay. Now, don't lose hope. Don't lose hope. I'll find out for you, one way or another. I hope so, Gary. I am counting on you. And I guess that Bobby's cracks about David bothered me more than they would have ordinarily because of two letters that I got in the mail. They were really terrible letters, too. What kind of letters, honey? Oh, they had newspaper clippings in them. With my picture and remarks about once a killer, always a killer, and something else about being sent to reform school. Why didn't you show them to your mom, honey? Huh? Because they were too awful to show to anyone. All right, well, I'll take a look at them tonight. Maybe I can figure out where they came from. You can't. I what? threw them away. Well, you shouldn't have done that. Actually, what you should have probably done is given them to John Higgins, and maybe he would better have understood why you lost control of yourself yesterday. I'm sure that it was Bobby Spencer who sent them. It all ties in with everything else she's been saying to me. Laura, you should have told us sooner. Now, maybe we would have been able to prevent everything that happened between the two of you yesterday. Probably should have. I was ashamed. Honey, when will you learn to trust us? Now, if you're afraid of something, you have to tell us, and then we can help you. All I'm afraid of right now is that something might happen in the next five months that would make Judge Stallman decide to send me away to a state institution. Laura, that is not going to happen. I give you my word on that. Hello, Laura. Dr. Weber. Bobby. Uh -huh. 